Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Knives. It's your host Fletcher, and today has been a long awaited day. As you see, we have the three out of four knives that we have tested in S90V. This has been a long time coming, a lot of work put into this. But finally, I have killed the edge on this S90V, and we will be doing our S90V steel review. So, just to recall what we covered, I did a Manly Wasp in S90V, I did a Manly Knife City in S90V, a Benchmade Bug Out in S90V, and a Spyderco Native 5 in S90V. So that's four, three brands, four knives that we covered the S90V in. All right. So set these off to the side and let's just cover some data on S90V just so we're kind of all on the same page here, all right? CPM S90V, it's Crucible Particle Metallurgy Grade S90V. The composition is going to be 2.30% carbon. It's quite a good amount. 14% chromium, 9% vanadium, and 1% molybdenum. Now, what really gives it steel, this steel, its performance in terms of, and its reputation for being a steel with a very, very long lasting edge is this 9% vanadium. Vanadium is one of the hardest carbides you can have in a steel, and it is an excellent carbide to have for extended cutting use. Now, it's not very good to have for very fine edge, but it is great for a nice, long-lasting working edge. So this steel, S90V, used to be called 420V, as you can see, because of the 14% chromium. They actually started... They started with the chromium amount in 420 high carbon, which is 135 to 14%. And they beefed it up with some vanadium. And they upped the carbon amount so that it could alloy with the vanadium to create the vanadium carbide. Applications, it's used in a lot of plastic injection and extrusive feed screws. Specialty knives, industrial knives, so say for a big food processing plant, if they're going, if they're cutting a lot of stuff all the time, say a lot of meat, vegetables, fruits, anything that's going to possibly need a very high wear resistant blade with a large amount of edge retention. Long lasting blade needs to be stainless industrial knives, injection mold. It's uh, very, very, there's a lot of wear that goes into injection mold. And so this just makes sure that your molds keep their shape for longer. They're not wearing out. Bearings, bushings, valves, yet another application in which it is important to minimize wear and to maximize the life, basically by minimizing that wear and maintaining the tolerances. All right, so this was off of the Crucible data sheet. Now we're moving on to some data from Laren Thomas, all right, from Nice Steel Nerds. So in Catra, at approximately 6.5 HRC, it cuts 775 millimeters. Now to give you a baseline, that's compared to S30V, which at its highest point at around, I think it was 62.5 Rockwell, approximately 62 to 63 Rockwell, only cut 65. 650 millimeters of the uh, silica cards, right? So if you ever looked at how Catra has done, it's basically a knife and then they push all these cards onto it that have silica in them until it dulls. That's what it's talking about. Toughness is going to be similar to S30V at approximately five foot pounds of toughness, which is adequate for stainless steel in a EDC use. The corrosion resistance is going to be less than CPM 154, with Laren giving it a 6 out of 10. 
and him giving S90V a 5 out of 10. Let's go ahead and get these down here. So S90V isn't going to be a super stainless steel, but it is going to be stainless enough to use for everyday carry. So now that we kind of have gotten to the technical aspects of the steel, we kind of know where we're coming from and use. How did this steel feel? So I feel like the longer I used this steel, the more I got to know it and the more I kind of knew what to expect from it. This is a very long wearing steel, but the window in which to strop it back is relatively small compared to its entire length of its edge retention, right? Think of an edge as like this. Because the majority of its edge retention is in the working edge, you can kind of push it too far and kind of lose when you're able to strop it back. It does strop back. On the compounds I was using, it felt like it was just polishing out and it kind of lost that S90V bite, but that would only be after a little bit of cutting and then as the edge started to degrade again it would kind of gain that that the tooth back the pros of s90v right so if i take any one of these it has a thousand grit edge and it's been stropped and it is very toothy but i almost feel like s30v does better with a thousand grit edge like this and that maybe i needed to try something around 800 600 grit actually did pretty well i think 800 stropped would do really well but it, it does perform because you still get that bite you can hear that bite you guys hear that picking up on my fingers let's see i think this one's gonna kind of do the same thing this is yeah this one might be a little crispier though because it's a little bit of a thinner edge but the great thing about this steel is as it deg degrades, that bite stays. That's what makes this steel so awesome is that high amount of vanadium keeps that tooth in the working edge. And so as I was breaking down cardboard boxes, even though it was getting duller and I could feel it, if it wasn't going down, I could just saw and the teeth would take care of it. With a steel like S90V, I could go days without having to strop or even sharpen. Now there were days near the end of its working edge in which I just felt like it was maybe, like I, the working edge was still there, it was still grabbing, but it was almost feeling too dull for some of the stuff I needed to do, like scraping stickers. But it was still grabbing or it would still, when I, when I would draw like this through paper, it would still cut, right? So the, the amazing thing about this steel is Yes, it may feel dull from time to time, but if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of time to sharpen, the more this steel breaks down, those teeth come in handy. The, those, those vanadium carbides and, the, and that bite you get from the steel really does come in handy as the steel breaks down. In terms of sharpening, this felt it felt just like S30V, really. It, it, it really wasn't. If someone says S90V is hard to sharpen, it, it, it sharpens just like any other stainless, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think it's super hard. I, was, I did have a hard time freehanding, but it had been a while since I freehanded. So that's me and not the steel, you know. It's, it's definitely me and not the steel. Because the minute I put it on my Hapstone sharpener, it was boom, done. Shaving through paper, no problem. S90V at thinner geometries, I actually really like. The, I feel like I got the same kind of characteristics and performance without a decrease in toughness at thinner geometries. So I think it's got to pass at thinner geometries. I think sharpening is just fine. You definitely need diamond abrasives though. Definitely use diamond abrasives, all right? That is a must have for S90V. Now, in terms of stropping, not super impressed. Maybe 60% of the original sharpness with S90V, maybe 
it just kind of loses the bite. That's the only problem is it loses the bite. So I, I, I'd probably say it's more 70, but you lose, I feel like it kind of smooths it out. But it'll then go back down and start breaking down. Do I feel like it's a steel you can kind of strop more than once? No, I feel like you'll start to kind of... It's kind of... To me, it felt like it was stubborn in terms of stropping back. But because sharpening is so easy and the edge lasts so long, you get I'd say you get about one to two strops out of S90V and then it's time to back to the stone. Whereas with a steel like S30V, you're maybe three to four times and then back to the stone. But I would say that a steel like this probably has twice the edge retention. So it's you're but you're you're having to put less maintenance into something like this, which is really nice. In terms of the corrosion resistance, never had a problem. It's not super wet here at all. Damn. I live in a desert. That was never going to be a problem. And even when I cut produce or anything like that with this, with these knives, it just, it never really came up. Not really, it's not, with S90V, it's not really a, more, a concern. It's, it's more stainless than XHP, which is about D2 level of corrosion resistance. So it's definitely a stainless for sure. I really appreciated having S90V because I've been carrying S90V during our busiest time of year at work. So I haven't, and, and personally, it's been a really busy time for me, and I just have not really had the time to sharpen. And so having a steel like S90V where it just lasts so long and just keeps up, even though it might not be super sharp, I know even if it's feeling duller, I can take it to work. And if I need to saw through stuff, I can, and it'll just keep going. That's that's where a steel like S90V really shines. You know, when I'm worrying about tests or anything like that, and the last thing I wanted to worry about is the S90V and having to sharpen it or or having to, to put a new edge on it. It was actually really nice to not have to worry you know, and then when I did have to put an edge on it, didn't take too long. Didn't, not at all. Not at all. Let's get into maybe some of the differences I noticed amongst the brands. I think that for the price that you pay for with Manly, they actually did a pretty good job with the S90V. I do think maybe it is a tad behind Benchmade's S90V, but so far I feel like Spyderco's is maybe the best in terms of, I think the stropping, I think it's dropped, the, I think the Spyderco dropped back a little better for sure, but I think the working edge just lasted longer on the Spyderco. The 63 HRC S90V I had in the Wasp, uh, I actually felt like it performed rather similar to this, except for maybe the fine edge was better. Now, with a steel with S, like S90V, no matter which brand you go with, the fine edge isn't going to last very long. I'd say maybe 70 to 100 feet of cardboard, and then you're down into that. Just you're You're down into the working edge, I'd say almost immediately. It, it kind of what it feels like, you know, you do a little bit of work, you're hitting some cardboard, and then you feel that working edge kind of start to kick in. You, some steels, you can feel the transitional period, like crew wear. S90V is kind of just, just a grade, kind of. You can feel it'll, it'll stick a little bit on some boxes, and then you'll go back to cutting sharp again, and that's what I feel like that transitional period feels like. In terms of the heat treat on all of these, they were, I would say, easy to deburr. I didn't have any problems there. I just feel like maybe Spyderco did the best. Now, in terms of Rockwell, heck, the Spyderco could probably be the lowest, but in the, in the fact that it was the working edge that lasted longer, my guess would be the microstructure of the Spyderco heat treat's probably a little better. 
but I would carry any of these just because they do last so long and S90V keeps that bite. My one gripe about this steel, okay, I guess I maybe have two. I have two gripes about this steel. I wish it struck back better and I wish the front end sharpness lasted longer. But in terms of overall sharpness, edge lasts a really long time, holy cow. Now, who, who would I recommend this steel to? This is a good steel for someone who knows how to sharpen, knows their steels, okay? I don't think it's a steel for beginners. You know, definitely shouldn't be your first good knife as an S90V. I think you should have experience with a steel like S30V and then upgrade to something like this, 100%. Because you need to have the proper abrasives in place. You need to know how to deburr just to get kind of the maximum performance out of any steel, but definitely this steel. You also need to kind of have your confidence in terms of stropping. Because if you went to go strop this and you were kind of new to doing it, then it would feel like you were bad at stropping when in reality, it's probably just the steel. Another thing too is this definitely isn't a hard use steel. This is a steel, S90V is a steel that you use when all you have to do is cut and you don't have a whole lot of time in between to sharpen, right? So say you think you're gonna have a long day at work or maybe a long two days at work and you're gonna need a knife that's gonna continue to stay sharp for over those two days. And if you have a lot of cutting to do, S90V is gonna do the job but it's definitely only for a, a, a knife. And by that, I mean a cutting tool, okay? I, I scraped with S90V, that's fine. I call that cutting. Scraping is a form of cutting. You're using the edge. It's not a this kind of steel or a, or a this kind of steel, okay? If you're doing straightforward cutting tasks and you need to cut for a long time continuously and not have to worry about your knife, S90V, is going to do the job for you. Now, there's a caveat in there because I think there are better steels, they're just not stainless. So let me throw another caveat in there. You need to, you need to do all that and you need it to be stainless. S90V is your guy. S90V is what you want. I definitely don't think this is for the beginning knife person. I think it's for someone who knows specifically what they need in a tool and is going to take care of it, but will be able to exploit the special nature of this steel. I can see why it's not offered on every single knife, you know, like, oh, it, be, it performs. If It did feel like a lot of the attributes were super similar to S30V, except for the edge retention, right? So I can see why manufacturers aren't using, you know, not to mention it's more expensive to grind, but I can see why they are not using it in a folder for everyone. It's definitely, you know, even if it has all the attributes of S, a lot of the attributes of S30V and it's more edge retentive, I can see why it's a more specialty steel. S30V just holds up a little better. It's a, it's a little more easy to strop. Uh, it's easier on the machines for the companies. It's also cheaper. So I can see why this isn't as mainstream, but for those of you that have an S90V knife, you can be confident in the fact that it's a high wear resistant stainless with properties super similar to S30V. You just gotta know what you're doing. So I would, rec I would definitely recommend getting yourself some S90V if you've been around the block a little bit and you're wanting to try something new. I think S90V is gonna be the steel for you. Would this steel make it into my top five? I... It's the front end edge retention for me that kind of kills it. And the fact that it doesn't straw back as well as something, say, like S45VN or even like a Nitro V, which are, you know, the closest one to that would be like the S45VN. Nitro V is kind of completely different. I would say in the top 10 steels, S90V is on the list for sure. 
If I had a top five stainlesses, S90V is probably number three. Three or four, for sure. But in terms of overall top five, I love my tool steels, and I don't think S90V has a spot in top five. Do I still would, would I still say it's a recommendable steel? 100%. I think if you put your money into S90V and you know specifically what you want it for, you're going to love it. You're going to love the knife. You're going to love the steel. Just kind of take into account that it is specialty. I, if it's a sp specialty steel, but that in a folding pocket knife, the only time I'd put it in a fixed blade would be like a skinning knife. I think that this steel would perform rather is is performing rather well in pocket knives and it's perfect for that but in pocket knives that you're only going to cut with and not do super hard tasks with i think that's where this shines i think that's where it's going to do best i think that's where your money is going to be best invested but overall i really enjoyed my time with s90v it is a really expensive steel But for the time that I didn't spend as much time sharpening or having to strop, I do think you get your investment back, especially if you know how to kind of shop around and get a good deal for the S90V. Some brands like to charge you so much money for it, and other brands just kind of charge you a little more than they would for their S30V. It only gets really expensive when it's paired with carbon fiber because that's also expensive. So if you're able to find like a native and S90V, or any of the uh, lightweights and S90V, definitely recommend it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell. It lets you know when I post a new video. And as always, guys, please let me know on your thoughts on this steel, any experiences you've had, maybe any stories. I love to hear them. Even more important than leaving the comment down below, though, is please don't ever forget to stay sharp.